Hey guys, we are continuing to look at exponent laws. Today we're going to answer the question, how do I simplify expressions using the quotient rule? So before I tell you what the quotient rule is, let's write out this problem in expanded form and see if we can find a pattern for ourselves. So 6x to the fourth divided by 2x to the third is the same thing as 6 times x times itself 4 times divided by 2 times x times itself 3 times. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then let's look at this. x divided by x is 1, x divided by x is 1, x divided by x is 1, and I'm just left with 1x on top. So it becomes 3x. And if you want to think about the invisible 1 exponent, you can. So we went from here to here. So 6 divided by 2, that makes sense. It's 3. So we're still just going to divide our coefficients like normal. x to the 4th divided by x to the 3rd, we came up with x to the 1. So it seems like we subtracted the exponents there. So that's what the quotient rule is. When we are dividing the same bases, we can subtract their exponents. So quotient rule, we are going to divide our coefficients like normal, but we will subtract the exponents. So whenever you have same bases, you can just subtract their exponents. So number one, I have 3 to the fifth divided by 3 to the third. I have the same bases of 3, so I can use the quotient rule, and that'll be equal to 3 to the fifth minus 3. And 5 minus 3 is 2, so it'll be 3 squared or 9. Okay, let's look at number 2. So we can use our quotient rule here. x to the 6th divided by x to the 2nd will be x to the 6 minus 2. And then y to the 4th divided by y to the 3rd will be y to the 4 minus 3 x to the 6 minus 2 is x to the 4th, and then y to the 4 minus 3 is y to the 1, or just y. So there is the final answer. Okay, number 3, I'm just going to look at each part at a time. I'm going to subtract the exponents of the like bases. So k to the 7th divided by k to the 5th, 7 minus 5 is 2, so that becomes k to the 2nd. And then m to the 10th divided by m to the 3rd, that's m to the 10 minus 3, so m to the 7th. And then p divided by p is 1. Those are the same exponents, so they simplify out. So your final answer here is k to the 2nd, m to the 7th. Okay, let's look at number four. I have coefficients this time, so I'm going to divide my coefficients. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. And now I'm going to take care of the x's. x to the third divided by x. That x has an invisible 1, so it's x to the 3 minus 1, so x squared. And then y to the 6th divided by y to the 2nd is y to the 6 minus 2, so y to the 4th. So your final answer is 4x squared, y to the 4th. Okay, number 5, let's start with the coefficients. Negative 30 divided by negative 3 is positive 10. And then x to the 7th divided by x to the 4th, 7 minus 4 is 3, so it becomes x to the 3. And then y to the 12th divided by y to the 3rd, 12 minus 3 is 9, so that becomes y to the 9th. And then the z does not have another z to simplify with, and it has an invisible exponent of 1, so it just remains z to the 1, or just c. So your final answer here is 10x to the 3rd, y to the 9th, z. Okay, number 6. Start with the coefficients. Negative 4 
over 36. Those are both divisible by 4, so that'll end up being negative 1 ninth. And then a to the 12th divided by a to the 6th, 12 minus 6 is 6, so that becomes a to the 6th. And then b to the 8th divided by b squared, 8 minus 2 is 6, so that becomes b to the 6th. And then c to the 9th divided by c to the 3rd, 9 minus 3 is 6, so that becomes c to the 6th. So this answer would work, or another way that you could write it is negative a to the 6th, b to the 6th, c to the 6th, all over 9. You can put the fraction coefficient out in front, or you can just move that denominator to the bottom of the fraction. Either of those answers work. You'll see it both ways. So that is the quotient rule. You divide the coefficients and then you subtract the exponents. Let's look at whenever we have the power rule and the quotient rule together. So if you have a fraction or division problem in parentheses and an exponent outside of the parentheses, you can distribute that exponent to each part of the parentheses. So that's what you'll want to do first. If the entire fraction is being raised to a power, then distribute the power by raising the coefficients to the power and multiplying the exponents with the power rule. And then we will simplify the numerator and denominator, denominator separately with the power and product rule if necessary. So this part is very important. Whenever you see your fraction, you might be tempted to try and start simplifying the fraction, but it's going to be a lot easier for you if you make sure that the numerator and the denominator are simplified first, because then after that, you can simplify the fraction with the quotient rule and you won't have multiple of the same thing. So distribute, look at the numerator and denominator separately, and then we will do the quotient rule. So let's look at number seven. I have this squared exponent. I am distributing it to everything in this fraction, not just the numerator, but also the denominator. So three squared is nine, and then x to the third squared is x to the sixth, and that's all over seven squared, which is 49. So there's the final answer, nine x to the sixth, all over 49. Okay, we're going to have the same thing on number 8. We need to distribute that 3 exponent to everything. That is the first step. After that, then we will worry about simplifying the fraction if we need to. So 2 to the 3rd is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. a to the 2nd to the 3rd is a to the 6th. b to the 4th to the 3rd is b to the 12th. And that's all over. Now I'm going to distribute this 3 to the denominator as well. 3 to the 3rd is 3 times 3 times 3, so 27. a to the 3rd is a to the 3rd. And then b to the 2nd to the 3rd is b to the 6th. Okay, now that I have taken care of this exponent outside, I can do the quotient rule. So 8 over 27 is not going to simplify. So I'm going to keep it as 8 over 27. a to the 6 to the 3rd, 6 minus 3 is 3. And then b to the 12th to the 6th, 12 minus 6 is 6. So you can keep your answer like this, 8 over 27, a to the 3rd, b to the 6th. Or you can put this whole thing in a fraction with 8 in the numerator, a to the 3rd, b to the 6th, they're also in the numerator, and then 27 would be in the denominator. Either way works. Okay, let's look at number 9. So on number 9, it is not the whole fraction that is being raised to the 3 exponent, it is only the numerator. So I'm just going to distribute that 3 to the numerator. So 3 to the 3rd is 27, and then x squared to the 3rd is x to the 6th, and that is all over 36, 
x to the fourth. And now I'm going to simplify each part. So 27 over 36, those are both divisible by nine. So that becomes three fourths. And then x to the sixth divided by x to the fourth. Six minus four is two. So it becomes three fourths x squared. You can write it like that. Or we could do three x squared all over four. Okay, number 10, I have a number that I'm gonna to distribute to the numerator and to the denominator, then we will worry about simplifying further. So two to the fourth is 16, two times itself four times, and then x to the fourth is x to the fourth, and then y to the fifth to the fourth is y to the 20th. All over, two squared is four, x squared is x squared, and then y to the third squared is y to the sixth. And now I just use the quotient rule to simplify this. So 16 divided by four simplifies to four, and then x to the fourth divided by x to the second, four minus two is two and then y to the 20th divided by y to the 6, 20 minus 6 is 14. So there is the final answer. All right, number 11, you might be tempted to try and start doing the quotient rule, but we can't do that yet because I need to simplify this numerator first. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the product rule. I'm gonna multiply the coefficients and then add the exponents. So nine times four is 36. And then a to the seventh times a, seven plus one is eight. And then b to the second times b, two plus one is three, so that becomes b to the third. And this is all over, the, new, or the denominator doesn't have to simplify it all, so I'm just gonna rewrite it, four a to the third, b to the second. Okay, now I'm gonna use the quotient rule to simplify this. So 36 divided by four is nine. And then a to the eighth divided by a to the third, eight minus three is five. And then b to the third divided by b to the second, three minus two is one, so I can just put b. So there's the final answer, nine a to the fifth b. Okay, number 12, we have a lot going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is take care of this numerator. I need to simplify that. We will have to do the power rule with the parentheses, and then I will still have to simplify it by doing the product rule, multiplying those two groups together. And then once I have fully simplified the numerator that way, then I can simplify the entire thing with the quotient rule. Okay, so let's start with the power rule in the numerator. Two squared is four, m to the third squared is m to the sixth. And then I will multiply that by three to the third is 27, and then n to the fourth to the third is n to the twelfth. And this is still all over 12m to the fifth, n to the fourth. Okay, so I've done the power rule. Now I need to do the product rule. So I need to multiply the numerator. So 4 times 27 is 108. And then m to the sixth doesn't have another m to multiply with, so it's gonna stay m to the sixth. And then the n to the twelfth does not have another n to multiply with in the numerator, so it'll stay n to the twelfth. And then it is all over 12 m to the fifth n to the fourth. So I did the product rule, I multiplied everything in the numerator. Now I can do the quotient rule, I can simplify this whole thing together. So 108 divided by 12 is 
9. And then m to the 6 divided by m to the 5th, 6 minus 5 is 1, so it's m to the 1 or just m. And then n to the 12th divided by n to the 4th, 12 minus 4 is 8, so that becomes n to the 8th.